Thank you. Um, good afternoon. My name is Carrie Hess, and I'm co-president of the Northern California chapter of Safada, and my husband and I own NorCal Vape in Redding, California. By trade, I'm a registered addiction specialist, and I'm here on a voluntary basis and have no ties to big tobacco. In fact, I was a slave to big tobacco for 21 years, and the vaping industry is the biggest anti-tobacco group that you will find. There are over 1,400 independent vapor retail stores in California, none of whom are associated with big tobacco. Uh, research shows that vapor products are a harm reduction technology, and this is the binder full of studies that show the harm reduction potential of vapor products. Some of the studies include, study confirms that e-cigarettes e generate virtually no toxins. The Royal College of Physicians says e-cigarettes can prevent almost all of the harm from smoking. Why vaping is not a gateway to smoking. And e-cigarettes poised to save Medicaid billions. Um, and that's only a handful of the multitude of studies that I brought with me. The measure's direction to the Board of Equalization to tax vapor products equivalent to the taxes levied on tobacco is fundamentally flawed because the death and disease caused by tobacco products are due to the fact that carcinogenic chemicals and tar are created through the process of combustion. Vapor products, by definition, do not combust, and they do not contain tobacco. Therefore, they do not create the 4,000-plus carcinogenic chemicals that are created when a tobacco cigarette is smoked. Vapor products are primarily comprised of electronic circuitry that use heat from a battery to vaporize e-liquid, quite unlike combustible cigarettes, which rely on combustion to burn tobacco. The proposed $2 pack tax, pack tobacco tax, $2 per pack tobacco tax, along with a series of other cigarette apply tax, just simply cannot apply to vapor products since it is impossible to establish equivalency for completely different products. It is time that we consider progressive policy that California is known for. For smokers who have tried unsuccessfully to quit smoking or just don't want to, vapor products represent a less harmful alternative to deadly combustible tobacco. To add to Josh's remarks in regards to the Royal Call of Physicians, they also quoted that this is the first genuinely new way of helping people to stop smoking that has come along in decades and has the potential to ha help half or more of all smokers get off of cigarettes. That is a huge benefit, bigger than just about any medical intervention, end quote. Every user of vapor products who has successfully made the switch from combustible tobacco can see firsthand the positive impacts that these vapor products have had on their lives. Like Josh, I too am a former smoker and tried many ways to quit smoking, and nothing was a permanent solution until I found vapor products. Taxing these products punitively will erode all of the progress they have already made towards tobacco harm reduction and certainly work to impede the progress going forward. Our only focus should be on how can we positively impact the lives of Californians' nearly 4 million smokers, including those that made the switch like myself, rather than adopting a sin tax that moves California backwards and will only lead smokers to more smoking. At the same time, one of the arguments for raising tobacco tax is that California lags the rest of the country. However, consider the fact that California's smoking rates have dropped to the second lowest of any state, which is also further evidence that e-cigarettes are not a gateway to smoking. Equating vapor products with combustible cigarettes is a step backwards in accomplishing the goal of protecting the public health of California. And while the opponents decry flavors, studies confirm that the variants in flavors are very important to adult people who are smoking to vaping. Um, a global study of adult vapors um, relevant, oh, revealed that 75% of flavors other than tobacco um, top the list. Other studies confirm that the variants in flavors are very important in people's effort to stop smoking and switch to vapor products. I am 42 years old and I currently vape a blueberry cupcake flavor. If vapor products become disproportionately expensive to combustible cigarettes, it will discourage the switch and what will happen is that we will have smokers continue smoking and smoking rates may even rise. 
Moreover, this measure overlooks the potential vapor products can have on helping reduce the public harm caused by smoking, which accounts for 37,000 deaths annually in California and $18 billion in economic and health care costs each year. This is also particularly important for Medi-Cal recipients in California, where the prevalence of smoking is more than double the national average. It is vital that California voters have a clear understanding of the serious and negative ramifications within this ballot initiative, and they understand the stark differences between vapor products and combustible cigarettes. As we stand today, the title of the initiative is misleading to voters and consumers, and the language falsely implies that the harmful effects of tobacco are similar to those of vapor products, and the direction to the Board of Equalization to tax vapor products equivalent to te tobacco cigarettes is fundamentally flawed. Believe me, we support protecting the kids. But let's not forget about the millions of smokers who are still smoking, as well as the vapors like myself who has made the switch to what science says is 95% less harmful than deadly combustible cigarettes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I return to the DOS for questions. Dr. Pan. So thank you for your testimony, although I think there are a lot of statements made that would have been better for the proof. Um, since you, I will just cite one. Um, since you cited the study in pediatrics, uh, permission to read. Of course. Uh, so the definition from the methodology of a study that was published in pediatrics on use of uh, e-cigarettes leading to, uh, uh, to uh, basically on electronic cigarettes, conventional cigarette use among U.S. adolescents, a cross-sectional study published in JAMA Pediatrics 2014. I believe that's the study you're referring to. Uh, the, uh, the study, uh, basically the definition as uh, in the methodology actually is not quite, I think, what you referred to here. Uh, in fact, here, let me just go ahead and scroll through here. So the actual question that was asked, because you uh, made a statement about, um, so current e-cigarette users, quote, current e-cigarette users were those who responded to, responded e-cigarettes to the question, during the past 30 days, which of the following products did you use on at least one day? So it's not if you've never, if only, only used e cigarettes at only one time ever in your life, which is, I believe, what you testified to. So, um, because I've actually read the study before and was uh, had been familiar with the methodology in the American and the Tobacco Youth Survey. So, um, you know, I I am concerned that, and I'd certainly like to see the study that. Uh, because you repeatedly said on at least several occasions that science proves that uh, e cigarettes uh, are 90, is it 95 percent? Um, I think we have that on tape. Uh, with, that would be all the better for the proof uh, that that is actually true. So, if, but if you have a reference, uh, I, I do to have reference. Give me, um, <clears throat> sure. Uh, it was a report published by the by PHE Public Health England. Uh, and I am happy to supply it with your office and anyone else's. That, but it is it is out there. It is. Uh, can you give the date and the, the, and the journal in which it was published? April of 2015, Six. or sorry, 2016, and the date the, the publication that it was published in. I believe it was published directly by Public Health England as a report to the Parliament of of the UK. Okay. Well, certainly I know that uh, here in the United States uh, that uh, the uh, FDA and the uh, and many other organizations have not found the same, but certainly we're very open to looking at uh, 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 that study. To be fair, the FDA has not released any studies that show the harm or relative risk of electronic cigarettes. Well, there are certainly numerous studies, including the study I just quoted, that uh, has shown at least certainly uh, issues of concern, including since you also agree that conventional cigarettes are dangerous, that. Uh, the increased risk of use of conventional cigarettes by youth who have uh, tried e-cigarettes. Uh, he was just asking a question, so we're not we're not really in a debate here at this point. So if he has a question, and you have you have an answer, but we're not going to debate the issue, okay? So uh, other questions, comments, Mr. Do you have, yes, are we, are, okay. To either of you, so you're you're retailers in the market, uh, and you work with uh, the industry. Is it is it 
possible that the increase in youth uh, consumption of electronic cigarettes or vaping devices and components is related to consumption of marijuana? I would argue that they're not related, that they are separate populations of users, and that everything that we have looked at has not provided a correlation between marijuana use and nicotine use. Okay, well, I, 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 was, I wasn't looking at the link with nicotine in particular, but really the devices themselves. Is, are, are the devices heavily, e-cigarettes and vaping devices used significantly by marijuana users? So there are some products that are made individually for medical marijuana purposes that are vapor pens um, that are sold at smoke shops or head shops um, or possibly collectives. Um, but the products used for uh, the nicotine or flavorings um, aren't necessarily compatible with that type of product with the honey oil or that type of substance is a different consistency. And from what I heard is that it will uh, clog the coil of uh, an electronic nicotine delivery device. Okay. The, um, should the measure to legalize uh, recreational marijuana pass, how would that change the business model either of either of you if you I, I know you indicated you own a shop in Reading uh, I didn't know if you did sir but what, what, what are the market trends you anticipate in the event that recreational marijuana consumption is legalized by the state of California via the ballot uh, it's a very difficult question okay. I would I would say that Speaking for both of us, our businesses are largely in the, the resale of nicotine products, electronic cigarette, you know, electronic nicotine delivery devices, if you will. Uh, can't speak for Carrie, but to date, 0% of my business has been involved with anything related to medical marijuana, marijuana consumption, recreational mar marijuana consumption, or anything in that category. I have not contemplated moving into that category. I'm a little disappointed that I've, I've been working for the last several years to offer what I believe is a tremendous alternative to tobacco, only to be told by my government you should be selling medical marijuana or mar recreational marijuana instead. And I'm certainly not implying that that's what you've said to us here today, sir, but it has been a sentiment that's been shared with us repeatedly in this building. Uh, we would argue that we need sensible and fair regulation for both sets of products. And to answer your question, my retail store is for the purpose of providing an alternative to, for adult smokers um, to step away from cigarettes. Okay. Uh, are you at all concerned with um, levels of uh, uh, youth smoke? And by the way, I didn't mention this. It's already covered under the law. Hookah, pretty prevalent. Mm -hmm. I represent um, an area in uh, West Los Angeles, the Westwood area. Um, uh, so UCLA is there, and there's a large uh, ethnic population uh, where uh, hookah is significantly pre uh, uh, prevalent. Are these concerns at all of yours? Or, or, are you all involved in hookah uh, distribution or anything like that? Uh, I would like to, to point out that hookah is, is very misrepresented uh, in the industry, hookah is often sort of seen and perceived as not combustible tobacco. Okay. It's not actually the case. It is combustible tobacco. So that's, that's a competitor of yours. Well, we wouldn't necessarily call them a competitor. There are e-hookahs or electronic cigarette versions of hookahs. Oh, really? Uh, but are, they, are they, you mean like a... They're, they're slightly larger than electronic cigarette devices, but they're largely the same type of device. Okay, okay. Typically, the flavoring is stronger as it is the flavoring with hookah tobaccos is a very highly flavored tobacco. Okay. Uh, however, traditional hookah does still involve the burning and combustion of tobacco. Okay. So we would argue that, that that has all of the health implications and risks that combustible tobacco has. Got it. Whereas the e-hookah product would be more in line with electronic cigarette product and the reduced risk profile of those devices. Okay. Ma'am, you are going to say something? Uh, no, I think Josh covered it. Okay, and, and, and just to the, the actual question, are you concerned about increases um, uh, among young people uh, in the consumption of uh, hookah or other tobaccos? Absolutely. I, I'm concerned with the use of youth and, on, and all consumable or combustible tobacco products. Do you think that uh, 
e-cigarettes and vape products should be available to under, I guess, 21-year-olds? Uh, I believe that the age of consent should be uniform in this country, should be, com should be compatible and comparable with the age of being able to serve this country. Uh, I stood in opposition of raising the age to 21. I do stand concerned that, you know, that youth will go to that underground market that you mentioned earlier. I do stand concerned that the underground market will swell as a result of this. I do think that people will find a way to skirt these laws, hurting our retailers here in California. I do feel that you won't have the ability to enforce these laws to out-of-state online retailers. Without question. Uh, last question, Mr. Chair. Um, what does the illicit market look like, if you don't mind? Because you, you already deal with aspects of it currently. Um, so these are online um, uh, manufacturers and uh, uh, retailers who are selling directly via websites, typically, or what? There are a number of re retailers who sell directly via the Internet and websites. I am one of them. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I am located in California right. and, and you, plan to comply. And, and, and you charge sales tax? Yes, I do. Yeah. And then do, do most that do that not charge sales tax? I don't feel that I'm at liberty to say whether they do or don't. I have not done a, an effective survey of the industry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A uh, couple questions. Um, first of all, you said you're concerned that younger people will go to the black market. So I'm assuming that people under 21. Correct. Yet I heard you say that the average vapor is 39 years of age. Yes. So what proportion of your customers are under 21? Uh, my customer, I can only speak for my customers, mm -hmm. less than 10%. Okay. I can answer that too. So okay. as of June 9th, 100% of my customers are age 21 and above. Um, prior to that, the age gap between 18 and to 21 was approximately 10% as well. Okay. Um, the study that you, you, you this 95%, is mm -hmm. I've heard this over and over and over again, comes from a single study, correct? It comes from a single study and then several studies that corroborated it, which we are happy to provide copies of. Actually, I heard it. Actually, I didn't. Uh, that, I, that is the first time I've heard that. I thought, I thought it came from a, my understanding. Well, it, it started a with a single study from Public Health England. It was then corroborated by several other studies, including the, the Royal College of Physicians study, which we mentioned as part of our presentation. Any of those in the U.S.? Uh, those two primarily were out of the U.K.? No, no studies have been completed and published by the FDA. But there are, stu there are studies that are in progress now. In know. progress, yes. Okay. Um, so when we talk about the 90, it's 95% safer. So what is the 5%? And, 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 and I'll, the follow-up to that is that um, not knowing the habits of vapors, do vapors consume more nicotine through vaping than they might through cigarettes? So I don't understand the correlation. That 5% doesn't mean anything to me if I don't know how much nicotine is being consumed, how much, how much vaping is being done. Do you Understood. You're, you're, it's a, it's, we're playing and we're playing games with statistics here that I don't really understand. Okay. So uh, first off, that five percent of the relative risk profile comes from the fact that largely the presence of harmful chemicals in the aerosol or the vapor, the the, air, the vapor that comes off of the product, are far less than that of a combustible cigarette, right? There's a measured number of 4,000 chemicals in combustible tobacco, something like 186 known carcinogens in that smoke. Comparably, within the vapor exhale of an electronic cigarette, there is only nicotine and a handful of chemicals that are at much lower concentrations than that of a combustible cigarette. So my question is, what are those chemicals? What, 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 what is, when I see these big clouds of Mm -hmm. whatever what's in there and what am, what am i as the consumer being subjected to when someone blows that in my face which happens fairly regularly these days understood uh there are four major components and i'll break down the chemical structure within them propylene glycol vegetable glycerin food flavoring and nicotine those are the four basic constituent parts within that those studies have found there are small but detectable levels of aldehydes Formaldehyde is one of those aldehydes. 
Uh, again, further studies show that those aldehydes are really only created as you let the devices run out of liquid when you're technically burning the wicking material, but it did find a handful of aldehydes, however, at much lower concentrations than that found in a cigarette. There are other known chemicals uh, that are, are known to be in electronic cigarettes. Uh, diacetyl, acetylpropanol, there's actually been a, quite a bit of study around those chemicals. Uh, they are in varying degrees in electronic cigarette aerosol. Uh, they are, however, highly concentrated in tobacco smoke, something like 300 parts per million of diacetyl, 200-something parts per million in a single cigarette of acetylpropanol. So in every case where we found the corresponding chemicals in electronic cigarettes, they occur at a much, much drastically reduced rate. Also, we would argue that the big ills of combustible tobacco are tar, the carcinogens, and the nitrosamines. There's only been one carcinogen found, that's that formaldehyde. There's been no tar found in electronic cigarettes, and there have been no nitrosamines found in electronic cigarettes. So those are the three big killers with combustible tobacco. If we found a fraction of one of those three and nothing else, it's hard for us to say, yeah, it's comparable to combustible tobacco. It's got the same risk profile. So that's where that 95% less harmful starts to come from. Then there are several studies here in the U.S. that showed that, uh, <clears throat> that there's no toxins in the secondhand vapor, that there was even a recent study that showed that they filled a room with something like two times the barometric pressure that you could physically withstand and found that that air inside of that room that was filled with secondhand vapor product was actually cleaner than ambient air, than ambient air in Los Angeles. And something else I'd like to point out is that while Josh is over here talking, he's putting out formaldehyde. As I'm speaking, I'm putting out formaldehyde. Um, it's just not at a level that's going to be harmful to Josh that I'm talking. So when they're st saying that uh, e-cigarettes put out formaldehyde, it's really at looking at the levels. And um, what has been found is that they're at levels um, about approximately 400% lower than cigarettes. So that's where there's it's a harm risk continuum. So we're not up here claiming that um, electronic cigarettes are 100% safe, um, but we're saying that they absolutely do not present the harms of deadly combustible tobacco. And burning the tobacco leaf is what produces the carcinogens and the tar which coats your lungs, and vapor products don't present those issues. I would say that I have has seen some information that says that the actual some of the devices are actually emitting other things as well, especially those devices uh, constructed in other countries uh, that are in, emitting things like arsenic and things like that. They well, that's what Josh was talking about earlier, where you dry burn. So if you don't put any liquid in there and you heat it up and you're burning um, some canthal or some cotton that's in there, of course, I mean, like if you put a steak on the grill and you leave it on there too long, it's going to produce carcinogens. But you just wouldn't use it that way. You wouldn't eat a steak that's been burned. You wouldn't vape on a vape pen that doesn't have any liquid on it. And, and we would also argue that as an industry, we have called for, asked for, and support sensible regulation of this industry product standards within this industry. We understand that there are imported products that do not come up to the standard that we as American-based retailers would like them to be at. There, there are products on the market that are not up to the standard that I would like them to be at as a representative of Safada, as, as, a, as a parent, as an adult, and as a consumer. I would like there to be sensible product standards and regulations for these products. Our opposition today is that they not be lumped in with combustible tobacco. I appreciate, appreciate that. Well, I, would, I would also remind you that you know, I, while your comments are directed to us in the hearing, this is a citizen's initiative. This is not a legislative measure. So uh, just well, we so hope that the we're whole very, world is listening. Well, well <laughs> I, yeah, may, maybe part of the world is listening. We'll see. <laughs> um, so at this point, uh, I'd like to go ahead and, and close this part of it, but give the opportunity for obviously for the public to make comments. So. Thank you so much for the opportunity Thank to you. be here. I appreciate that. So uh, before we move there, I want to let the members of the public know that we, we did reach out to uh, several other interest groups regarding their positions on the initiative and whether they'd like to participate. Altria never got back to us, and the Chamber of Commerce and several tax groups told us they were not going to have a position on the initiative in time to testify today. So I want to thank you for everyone who came here to offer their perspective. We will open this up to members of the public. If if wouldn't mind by a show of hands, how many people would like to speak on this issue? 
Okay, then fine. We'll try to limit uh, limit your comments for to a minute or two, uh, but please just come and line up at the microphone, and uh, uh, we'll go ahead and take public comment beginning as soon as people begin to appear. Uh, no, thank you. Hello, my name is Mario Weeks. I am actually a sales representative of the Vapor Spot. Um, I actually oppose this due to the fact that there are a lot of things that haven't been explained through what we actually go through, how we explain to people how these devices are used, how effective they are. Most of the time I've heard a lot of people state that they're, they're doing it on a, on a basis of saving for nicotine, nicotine, nicotine. I have actually been vaping for seven years. I've been, I haven't been doing nicotine for the last four. So there actually are products out there that you can use the same sensation as cigarettes, but they don't have nicotine to them. How was those things regulated? How does that fall into the tax initiatives? That's what I'd like to know. But thank you for listening to me. Sure. Hopefully it's something you can consider. Thank you. I'll just remind you that it's not up to us to consider this. It's on the ballot for the, for the voters to decide. Yeah. So thank you. My name's Ace. I manage the vapor spot here on the grid, 27th and J. And we got a few stores, Westwood, Sherman Oaks, and... Uh, SoCal stuff. But when it comes down to it, honestly, I was a former smoker myself. I've been uh, working in the industry for going on to like eight years now, give or take. But regardless of the fact, I mean, dude, it's, it's 95% healthier, uh, less, uh, less harmful than traditional smoking. And I, do n I never want to touch a cigarette ever again. So whatever they said that it's a gateway to it, I will never touch a cigarette or anything that combusts ever again. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, Lindsay Freitas with the American Lung Association in California, just here in strong support of this initiative. Thank you. Paul Neprath on behalf of Planned Parenthood Affiliates of California, our 115 health centers, uh, 850,000 patients in the state, we're a health care provider, we're strongly in support of this measure. Thank you. Tam Ma with Health Access California, the statewide health care consumer advocacy coalition in strong support of this measure. Callie Hampton on behalf of the American Heart and American Stroke Association in support of the initiative. Thank you. Good afternoon, Brianna Pittman with the California Dental Association and our 26,000 members in support of the initiative. Thank you. Justin Garrett with the March of Dimes in strong support of the initiative. Thank you. Alicia Sanchez representing the 41,000 members of the California Medical Association and we're proud um, members of the Save Lives Coalition because it will do just that. Thank you and support Great. this initiative. Thank you. Kimberly Chen with the California Pan-Ethnic Health Network. While we haven't taken a formal position yet on this initiative, we do know the disproportionate impact that tobacco products has on communities of color. Thank you. My name is Ning Garcia. I'm the owner of Vacaville Vaporium and I oppose this initiative. My name is Spencer Oberlin, owner of Elevape in Vallejo, California, and I oppose this measure. Okay, thank you. My name is Robin Pennock. I'm the manager at Elevape in Vallejo, California, and I oppose this measure. Thank you. My name is Rocco Vega, and um, I recently started a small e-juice manufacturing company, and uh, I'm strongly opposed to this. Um, I don't think you can regulate vaping and just lump it into tobacco when it's not tobacco, when it has nicotine and not tobacco products. Nothing's being combusted, nothing's being smoked. It's being vaporized, and uh, yeah, I'm strongly against this. Great, okay, thank you. My name is Christy Smith, and I'm co-owner of No Buts About It, an electronic cigarette store in Sonoma County. Um, and we opened a, uh, be four years in November, and in those four years, um, first off, my customer base is well over 30, uh, my age group and thereabouts, and I've helped a lot of people stop smoking combustible cigarettes, a lot. Um, and a lot of my customers who started out using high doses of nicotine um, are now down to zero. I have several customers now that vape zero milligrams of nicotine. They just enjoy vaping. So, you know, in terms of what the health benefits are to this product, there are many of them. And it, it disappoints me to not hear enough about, you know, you were asking the question about uh, amount of nicotine. When we opened our store, a lot of our customers were vaping 15 or 24 milligrams of nicotine, which is equivalent to a high 
nicotine cigarette, like a, a Cigarallo or one, something like that. That's what I've, uh, my understanding is. They are now down to one and a half, three, one and a half percent of, or milligrams of nicotine, so that, which is less than what they would get in like an ultralight cigarette. There are a lot of facts that need to be looked at in this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Tom Riddell. I'm co-owner of No Buts About It with Christy. Um, she pretty much wrapped up everything I want to say. But uh, you know, the the ideal in our business is to get people to not use tobacco products, give them the opportunity to choose their nicotine level, and occur, and encourage them to eliminate nicotine. Once we find that we do not have nicotine and the other chemicals in our bodies, my personal experience is that, well, getting rid of the chemicals, the other chemicals. My body told me I had too much nicotine, and it kept, just kept telling me, knock it off, knock it off, knock it off. And I now vape zero nicotine and have for four years. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Jeff Braithwaite, co-owner of Tasty Vapor in Northern California. We're one of the first liquid manufacturers in the United States. I, I can go into the whole spiel about how this has helped me, but what I really want to do is invite you to look into the research. And sadly, there is not a lot of research in the United States where the United States has spent their efforts more on trying to effectively overregulate, if not outright ban these products, rather than do the research into these products. So sadly, that's all outside of the United States, but I do invite you to take a look at what is available and make a more educated guess on what to do about this. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon. My name is Jeff Hess, uh, co-owner of NorCal Vape in Redding, California. And I would just like to state for the record that uh, nicotine in and of itself does not cause cancer, emphysema, heart disease, or any of the above. It's the tar that's in the combusted tobacco. So uh, on top of that, you know, if, if California truly is uh, the healthcare champion and a global leader, well then why would they not listen to a five century old body that is uh, regarded in the, in the world as one of the scientific uh, Goliath out there and, and follow the advice that, that, that they have come from. You know, I don't understand why it's so difficult to separate big tobacco from the vaping industry. The, the pens that big tobacco makes, the little Mark 10s and abusers and everything that, you know, nobody's vaping on that. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Big tobacco is not the vaping industry. I'm the vaping industry. They're the vaping industry. We are absolutely unable to even speak when you mention us as a tobacco product. That is the biggest outrage that I could possibly imagine is comparing our product to a combustible uh, killer like tobacco. Our industry was created by consumers to stop the madness of the last 70 years not to hook a new generation on nicotine. Within 50 years from now, there'll be no need for a vape shop or the vapor industry either because guess what? Nobody will smoke or vape. That's the point. And anybody who's in this industry for the right reasons, which I believe is the greater majority of this industry, is in this industry to stop, help people stop smoking and to live a healthier life, not to hook and addict a new generation like others out there are trying to make you believe that that is the case. And one more thing I'll leave you with, you know, there is TFNs out there. I have liquid in my shop that's TFN liquid, tobacco-free nicotine. Um, it exists. So how do you, how is it that a law can be passed uh, equating that we're a tobacco product even when we don't have tobacco nicotine that isn't derived from the tobacco plant? And once again, I want to leave you with nicotine does not cause cancer, emphysema, heart disease, or any of the above, the TARS do. Combustible tobacco does. So thank you for your time. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, please, are we, I'm sorry, our, I should have said that in the beginning. We don't do that here. For, sorry. Um, anyone else? I don't want to be, I want to make sure everybody gets a chance. Okay. All right, seeing, seeing no one else, I just, I just will say this. Um, there, for additional information, um, any, anybody who might want to see the California Department of Public Health's perspective on this, there is a state health officer's report on e-cigarettes. It's 32 pages long. It's available on the California Department of Public Health website, so I would urge you to take a look at that as well if you are out there making your decision on how you're going to vote on this initiative. So I want to thank everyone for being here today for the, for the robust discussion and, and the information, and I hope that 
that uh, as we go forward, uh, consumers, uh, voters will take a very close look at this, and, and, and when they cast their vote, they will do so in an informed way in November, and we will see what the outcome is at that point. So at this point, uh, thank you very much, and we'll go ahead and adjourn this uh, informational hearing, and have a great afternoon.